Hi, welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin, and we are on the ground at Google with CloudNow, which is a nonprofit organization that supports and is for leading women in cloud and technologies and converging technologies. And we are here tonight at their fifth annual Top Women in Cloud Innovations Awards ceremony. We're very excited to be talking to a CUBE alumna, Erica Brescia, who is the COO of Bitnami, also an award winner tonight. Erica, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, tell us a little bit about Bitnami. Um, you are one of the founding uh, members. Mm -hmm. What do you guys do? What are you focused on? Where's your expertise in cloud? So Bitnami is, has been focused for over 10 years now, actually, on making software incredibly easy to install and deploy anywhere. And we've had a major focus on cloud computing recently, obviously with how popular it is. We're the top provider of packaged applications on every major cloud platform. So we package over 150 different applications like Drupal and WordPress, as well as development stacks like Nail, Rails, excuse me, and Node and Mean, and make it incredibly easy for users of all technical abilities to get an application or a development environment up and running on the cloud in a secure and optimized way right out of the box. Fantastic. So as a, as a senior, C-level mm -hmm. female leader in technology, give us a little bit of insight into your career path. How did you get to be a COO? I probably have an unusual path. I actually studied investment finance I when I it. went to school. <laughs> uh, did not study engineering. If I could do it again, I might do it differently. Um, but I went into sales briefly while I was still in college and a little bit after college. And then I joined my co-founder to start the company. So I was 23, so I can't say I had a huge career path, but I've been at it for almost 12 years now. So it's been uh, a lot of work, but we're, we're doing great. We're 75 people and bootstrapped which I suppose is a little unusual in Silicon Valley. So, you know, obviously um, I don't have kind of the traditional, well, I went and I did this and then I went and did that and then I started this company. Although I did, like I said, I ran some uh, sales teams previously to this, but I've certainly learned a lot along the way. You know, bootstrapping a company, we started with a really small, great business, but uh, wanted to find a way to scale. So it's almost like going through two startups in one and you know, learning as we go. I've had a lot of great people support me along the way and have built a lot of great connections over time. A lot of women, but also I'll be honest with you, a lot of men have supported me along the way because you know, with infrastructure software and cloud, they're just, especially when I started in this in 2005, there just weren't a lot of women. So I've been fortunate to have a lot of supportive men, you know, help and, and coach us along the way as we built out the business. So I'd say like building the company has almost been my career path, if you could say that. So many inspiring things just came out of what you said. <laughs> One of them being that, and I'm very similar in terms of, um, having mentors that were both male and female, that people that were just inspiring, whether it was specifically to get from science to technology or just from a competence perspective. Um, I think that's one of the, we look at a lot of the, the statistics, right, in women in technology and we, we, we know them. Uh, I think one of the biggest barriers that might not be talked about as much or studies as much is that social influence and maybe that um, psychological kind of confidence barrier, but you've clearly had confidence in yourself. You had a, a diverse background, which I actually think is a huge benefit. Mm. And I, I, I want to ask you, looking at that diverse background and where you are now, would you really go back and, and change your career course, your study course? I think I would have probably done a double major is what I would have done. <laughs> I mean, I do think, I, I work in an incredibly technical space. You know, we're working with, you know, Kubernetes and containers and, you know, all of the very, very cutting edge. And the more you understand about the technology, I do believe it's easier. Um, I've had this conversation actually with a lot of women in the space who say, you know, don't worry about it at your level. It doesn't really matter. But I'm one of those people that really likes to understand the details. Um, and, and it does take me a little bit longer to uh, to get my head around new technologies because I haven't been, you know, coding for a decade or two. Um, so, you know, I think that there's value in understanding the technical side. I mean, I wouldn't go back and be an engineer necessarily. I mean, just based on my skills and my personality and where I think I can add the most value, I don't think it would be as a coder just because, you know, we all have to recognize our individual talents and I don't think that that's, that's really the right path for me. 
But I do think having that technical understanding would be helpful. And I actually was in speaking to some uh, high school students recently uh, about what they should do and how they should be thinking about their careers. And one of the things that I said is, you know, we're so lucky right now to live in a time when we have access to so much information and training. And there's so many free courses online. You can go, I mean, these kids don't have jobs yet, right? I said the summer, this was before the summer, actually. I said the summer's coming up, you know, get online. Even MIT and Stanford put incredible content online and there's a Khan Academy. Go learn. Even if you don't want to pursue tech as a career, I think having an understanding of technology is going to become increasingly important in everyone's career moving forward. So, I agree with you because every company these days is a tech company. Exactly. Even if you're in marketing, you need to understand marketing automation platforms and, you know, a lot of the growth hacking. Oh, yes. Whether or not you agree with the term, you know, is about understanding, you know, numbers and statistics and technology. And so it touches everything, really. Absolutely, it does. So looking at um, statistics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a quarter of or less of uh, people in technology are females. Um, talk to us about Bitnami from a women in tech perspective. Mm -hmm. What's that kind of culture like? It's a fairly young company. Sure. Is that was that culture, obviously with you as one of the leaders, sort of built around none of that should ma matter, the pair, it should really be you know, a meritocracy? Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, until pretty recently when there's been this big push around women in tech, I didn't think about the fact that I was a woman much. And I didn't think about whether or not the people that we were hiring were women or not. Um, I'm proud to say we have some incredible women that work for us, not as many as we'd like, to be honest. And I've spent some time talking to people recently about how we can try to just bring women into the recruiting pipeline, because the problem is they just don't apply. And as a small company, you know, we're 75 people. I don't have the recruiting team that Google or Intel or some of these companies that are really proactively going out and trying to find women and bring them into the fold. You know, it's harder to do that as a small company. So I'm trying to think of ways that we can go out and find more women and bring them in. But um, I, we don't think about that a lot at Bitnami. And I'm sure part of it is because, you know, I'm one of the leaders of the company. I've been around the whole time. People are used to listening to me and you know I'm involved in all the strategic conversations and everything else and it's never been about you know women versus men right. it's it's sad to me to see some of those statistics um, and I'm trying to think about things that I can do personally to try and, and help at least talk about my story and I, I like the fact that you honored my diverse background there and share with women that you don't have to be an engineer also exactly. to have a great career in technology. Exactly. I think that's an important point there is it wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to think about it. Exactly. Uh, I, I agree with you there but hopefully platforms like being on the cube are, are just one way that you can share your story and help to get that message out there that um, they don't have to necessarily go to you know, the big guns to your point that have more resources to recruit but this is a company that wants to recognize you and help you succeed as a person, as a human. Yep. And one thing I'd say is I think, you know, the statistics are, you know, sometimes disappointing, but I actually think it's a fantastically good time to be a woman in technology. There are so many companies and people that are really focused on this issue, and I think it's through the work of organizations like CloudNow um, that are kind of elevating the the message and the cause and getting the word out. And people, even me, like I'm thinking a lot more about women in technology than I did even three or four years ago. And I know I've spoken with a lot of other women founders who are in the same position. And people are actively seeking board members. I was just appointed to the board of the Linux Foundation because they're looking for a more diverse set of opinions. Fantastic. And I mean, there that's just one example. But I think there really are a lot more opportunities for women and people's eyes are really being open and folks are, are understanding a lot better the problem and also what they can do, whether or not they're a man or a woman, to help help resolve it. Exactly. Well, you heard it here from Erica Brescia, <laughs> COO of Bitnami. Never been a better time to get into technology. Erica, congratulations on your award. Thanks for coming back to theCUBE, and we wish you a great night. Thank you so much. You've been watching theCUBE, and if you, like Erica, think it's a great time to honor women in technology, tweet us at theCUBE with the hashtag women in tech. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back.